What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. By your request, we are working on taking the ball on the rise. I put a poll into the Instagram story as well as on the Facebook and the YouTube channel and I asked for suggestions on what the next topic would be. And the one that won was taking the ball on the rise. So that's what we're gonna be doing in this video. Let's get right into it. When you decide to take the ball on the rise, you're going to be doing it for one of two reasons. Either you're going to be in a position where you're trying to control the point, or you're going to be in a position where you're being forced to take the ball on the rise. Once you recognize which one of those situations you're in, the technique changes based on that situation. So, to give you the context, if somebody was hitting a ball that is really aggressive and takes time away from me and I don't have time to back up off of the baseline, I'm going to be taking the ball on the rise in a defensive position, even though this is technically what we would call a aggressive court position, the situation dictates that I'm being defensive. Conversely, if somebody was to give me a ball that I want to look to move forward on and take more time away from my opponent, and I find myself inside the court, taking the ball on the rise inside the court is a different technique and you're looking for a different outcome. I'm going to be breaking down the technical aspects first and then we'll apply them to a tactic. So let's start with the aggressive option. Let's say that I'm playing a point and I create an opportunity where somebody gives me a short ball. I don't want to wait in the back of the court to see what the ball's going to do. I want to continue to press my opponent and take time away from them. That being the case, your best option is to take up court space and then potentially have to take the ball on the rise. You don't have to take the ball on their eyes, but it does give you the added benefit of taking more time away. I'll show you two examples. If I receive the same ball that lands right about here, but I approach it twice, the result is going to be that the person gets more time or less time. So if I hit the ball from this position here, I could let it sit up and then attack it. Or I could let it sit up and then step right in and take it right off the ground. The biggest difference is how much time do they get? Your technique doesn't change in any way in terms of the setup of the arms because you have time. What's gonna change is the setup of the legs. The biggest mistake a lot of people make when they try to take the ball on the rise is they go down to where the ball is as they're swinging. You actually should already be down and then either stay here and take the ball on the rise or potentially come up with it depending on what your goal is with what the ball is going to do. Do you want to give it a little bit more height or spin? But the main thing that people do is they will shorten their swing, which takes away some of the velocity. And in some cases it's necessary, but you shouldn't do it by choice. So again, if that ball comes to me and I set my racket in this position, I can take the ball on the rise. I'm not saying I can't take the ball on the rise, but I'm not getting the same output on that shot. But if I take my racket back, giving myself the same amount of time, you can hear the difference in how fast that racket comes through. The benefit here is that you chose to come in. I could be the person that just sits back, has a floater that sits up, and I just wait for it and then take my swing. Not a bad thing, but it doesn't give the optimum output and the optimum effect on my opponent. When you change your technique, it's going to be dependent on whether you're here or at the back. So we're going to get to the one in the back where you guys can actually see the clear difference in how you have to approach that one. When we look at the defensive one, this is where your time becomes a factor. You don't have as much time because the quality of your opponent's shot is going up. Whether they come to the net and they're sticking volleys or if they're at the baseline and just hitting the ball fast, your time is taken away so you don't have the ability to execute the full swing. In that case, you're going to end up shortening these motions, dropping your body down to take the ball at whatever height it arrives to you because again, you don't have the time to move back either. And from there, your goal is going to be stable contact with the racket face pretty square and then extension back. If you do that correctly, the main thing you're going to have to be worried about is just making sure you get the proper neck clearance. And that's just going to be based on extending your arm up a little bit. The way I try to explain it to people is if you've ever thrown a ball against the wall, if you hit the wall first, the ball falls onto the floor and then comes to you. This is like throwing the ball at the floor and then the wall. As it hits the floor and then the wall, the ball comes up naturally. So you don't have to really do a lot of lifting to make sure it clears the net. You just have to make sure your extension feeds off of that upward momentum. So if that ball comes at me and I'm kind of just waiting right here, 
as I sit right in this position, the ball's already rising and I only have to extend my arm up. Doesn't matter how fast it comes, I just reach my hand through. Now if that ball comes in faster, here's what happens. Same thing. I lean back a little bit, but my contact and my setup were very close to each other. I went here to here. Now if you want to be aggressive with this, which is kind of difficult, what you're going to do is you're going to end up holding your position at the bottom and then extending your arm through. You're not going to do the pop up, you're not going to lean back or forward. You just want to really hold that position. The biggest mistake people make, as I said before, is trying to get the racket to bring the ball up, whether it's a forehand or a backhand, when you don't need it. Because if I, if I use my racket as an example, and this is a wall, as the ball hits the floor and then the racket, it deflects up naturally. And most people think that they have to get the ball to come back up. And that's the biggest mistake you make, because you're going to take that ball that you're taking on the rise, and you're going to end up wondering how you hit it long. And it's usually because there's just a little too much lift when you should be trying to extend the ball back through the court. I'm going to be changing the camera angle now so that you can see the difference when I'm rallying with somebody or being fed the ball and what the trajectory of the ball is depending on my situation. So I have Emily assisting me today. She's going to be feeding the ball to the baseline, giving me basically no time to back up. My only option is going to be to drop down and extend my arm forward. What I want you guys to look at here is how quickly the setup happens and the trajectory the ball takes without me really going for too much lift. That yep. I'm taking the ball the rise. I'm not really popping up. And that's all it takes to really get the ball to go away. The problem would come in if I ended up trying to get this ball up on my own. You end up with a lot of play because the ball's already rising, and then you end up having more trouble controlling. If I extend, all I'm doing is deflecting the natural angle the ball takes. Biggest mistake people make, as I said before, too much lift, too much spin, going behind their back, just push the ball forward, as you saw, the natural angle makes it very easy. Just don't try to force big motions when that time is taken away from you. For this last part, we're just going to go live. I'm going to rally with Emily, and I'm just going to highlight opportunities to take the ball early in one way or another. When you are in the point, your direction is going to be your tactical decision. Taking the ball on the rise when somebody pushes the ball at you really fast, usually your best choices are to take the ball on the rise and just stay neutral cross court or push the ball deep center. You don't want to be going and taking the ball on the rise and changing direction too often because, that, again, that deflection could just push off and your ball will go wide. When you go to take the ball on the rise in an aggressive position, you usually will just go down the line depending on what side you set up because most times your ball on the rise will turn into your transition shot going to the net. If you're not going to take the ball on the rise and move forward, then there's a little subjectivity to where your opponent is resting, meaning like if I put Emily on this side of the court, I should probably take my ball on the rise to the opposite side of the court, taking time away so she doesn't have the ability to catch up to it. But as I said, if you're going to use it as a transition shot, down the line is 99% of the time going to be your best option. So let's get into this last part. Again, I'm not looking to take all the balls on the rise. This is just a rally into a position where you're looking for that opportunity if it comes. Like I could have taken that on the rise, but there was no setup. This is just a neutral rally. Emily just took the ball on the rise instead. My ball was short and a slice. She stepped in, gave me minimal time to get out of the court. Ready? And as you saw, when she, changed, when she came in and took the ball on the rise, she took it early and put the ball where I wasn't. And then that's me holding my ground and just going from one side to the other. Because I didn't want to back up. Backing up doesn't work against Emily. Right here. Nice slice. But right there, perfect, perfect example. Didn't have to take that ball on the rise. That one was a choice. That actually falls into that aggressive option because I could have backed up. There was enough time to set up, 
but I wanted to keep that time pressure on her. Right here. Perfect. Perfect setup. I saw my chance to move in and I took the ball on the rise twice. She ended up getting stuck in the middle because she had literally zero time to react. That's gonna wrap up this video, guys. I hope you found it helpful. If you can think of anybody that'll benefit from this, send it to them. Again, this video was suggested by one of the people in the Iron Will community. I like asking questions, and I like giving you guys what you actually ask for. What I want you guys to do is remember one thing with this. It's all based on the situation. Use the shot to take on the rise when you have no choice, and if you have no choice, change your technique and shorten it up. If you have a choice and you want to step in, you really need to make sure your racket is set early so that you don't have to slow your shot down as you take time away from your opponent because that kind of defeats the purpose. Hit the ball the normal speed you do and take more time away. If you have to slow it down, there is actually minimal benefit to it. We will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for tuning in. See you guys later.